if your goal is to do this. Then keep watching. Hey guys, my name is Zach Ferguson, and this channel is all about helping you guys reach your tricking goals. I may not be the best tricker, but hopefully my experience can help you guys become the best. This is a tutorial for a corkscrew, or cork for short. Cork is many beginners dream trick and is synonymous with tricking. Either it's gonna be a free runner or a tricker if you see someone do a cork in public. Uh, but it does exist in things like capoeira and gymnastics as beam dismounts. So it's not exclusive to tricking, but it's pretty much exclusive to tricking. When corks were first done by trickers in the XMA circuits, they kind of looked like a round kick B-twist kind of thing. And over time, they've evolved into kind of a 45 degree swing with a 360. And when I started tricking, uh, double cork was really high up there in cork variations. Um, triple cork was just kind of like a myth that people talked about, like, <laughs> wouldn't it be crazy if someone did a triple cork? And then some people were like, um, actually, uh, that's not physically possible based on uh, the way gravity works and uh, the way you're swinging like there's not enough power to triple cork and now people can do quad corks so cool and before I actually teach you a cork I just wanted to say that I'm honestly not the best at corks uh, that's kind of why I avoided doing them for so long I didn't want to do a tutorial on them because I wanted to show cleaner better examples but I've worked for a couple months and they're not getting much better I have a lot of experience with corks I can do a ton of cork variations I can swing into and out of my cork I can do double cork from time to time, but I'm not the best at it, like I was saying. I used to be a lot better at it, but either way, I know how to cork, and here are a few people that I have taught corks from the ground up or helped them with their corks along the way. And all of these tutorials are made in a way to where I am trying to help you land your first cork or get your cork or improve your cork a little bit because you're thinking of it differently uh, rather than doing like an old technique, maybe like changing it up to see if that helps you with your technique to get a better cork. This isn't supposed to be the perfect cork. I'm trying to help you land your first cork, we get it, and then you can clean it up and make it look however you want it to look. You're gonna cork a ton of different ways depending on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to do a variation, you're gonna cork a lot differently than if you're trying to do it low and fast and swing out of your cork. All of that to say that I may not be the best at it, but hopefully my experience can help you guys land it. This tutorial is gonna be long, and I never really say this in my videos, I'm not sure why, but I take a lot of time to timestamp all of my videos, so check down here on the bar and you will see it broken up into pieces, and you can click on whichever chapter you'd like to. Um, you can also look in the description, you can see any part of the video uh, that you might wanna click on, you can just click there and look at that method, or look at the quick tutorial really fast, or whatever you're trying to find because I know this is gonna be a long tutorial. Anyway, you're here to learn cork, so let's go ahead and get to the quick tutorial.
Okay, so what is a cork? A cork, really simply, is just a full off of one leg where you swing, or a 45 degree axis 360 flip where you initiate your power by swinging your leg. Normally landed on your left foot if you swing with your right leg, or on two feet, depending on what you're trying to do out of it. Cork has almost an endless list of variations or things you can do into or out of it. So you can think of it kind of as a Swiss army knife of a trick. You can change it up so many different ways or use it in many, many different ways. It's one of the most popular tricks because of this. Fulls are very similar, but corks are a little more tricker, if you know what I mean. It's kind of like the EV of tricks. It's number two on the Tricking Illuminati's list of most desirable tricks for beginners, second only to the illustrious backflip. And it is part of the beginner twisting triad that you should learn as a beginner before going on to other variations of different tricks, at least in my opinion. You can get a cork and just get really good at corks and do a million cork variations without ever learning a B-twist. It's been done before, but I think you should learn your B-twist, your cork, and your full before going on to learning a bunch of variations of them but either way like it's it's completely up to you each tricker is unique so the prerequisites for this trick are going to be at least a slant gainer or a full you don't have to have both but if you have both then you can do method number one but those are obviously not the only prerequisites that will help you with this you can also have a gainer flash a gainer hook or moon kick you can do a tuck gainer you can have a gainer arabian you can have a side flip you can have a b twist there's tons of different tricks or movements that can help you gain the air awareness for your cork and understand how to uh, turn your body and maybe will be a, like a safer way to think about your cork when you're first learning it but full and slant gainer are the only ones that are really the most like dire like you need one of those at least I would say um, but I will take you from zero to cork in this tutorial um, even if you don't have it I will show you how to get it so even if you have none of the prerequisites I will show you how to progress into your cork but I would recommend watching my slant gainer tutorial or a full twist tutorial when I come out with it. Cork is a movement that's gonna take a lot of power, so you're gonna need at least a setup that is strong. So maybe like a J step, a pivot step, a Euro step, a spin step, a scoot, a master scoot, a TDR, a gainer switch swing, a full swing, or a rise, or something that can give you power to use for your cork. You can just do it standing, but that's pretty hard. And obviously if you're a beginner and you can do a standing cork, like how, how did you not learn it before this? All right, on to method number one. Just do it. This method is for people that have both of the prerequisites that I was talking about. If you have a slant gainer and you have a full, what are you doing? Land your cork. All you're gonna need to do is swing for your slant gainer and as soon as your leg comes up, just think about it like a full. You can swing and look over your side and twist over. If you're coming from gymnastics, it's going to be really hard. So unless you have a standing full, I wouldn't recommend doing that. But if you've got like a scoot full or something like that, that comes on more of a 45 degree axis uh, and you can do that, but you maybe are bad at swinging, then what you wanna do is just progress through. Let's use scoot full as an example. You're gonna progress through from your scoot full and you're just going to spot over your side, try to land on one leg or you know, just land it really high up and just do like a good full. And then all you're gonna have to do is do your really fast setup and just kind of skip the ground with your leg and do a full. From there, you can just progress to swinging more and more and get more comfortable with the swing being your power rather than your upper body being the power. But like if you got a slant gainer and a full, just do it out of a setup swing your leg and do a full, and you're gonna have a cork. After that, you can just clean it up. I know that sounds silly and like, oh, good tutorial, bro, but I've had so many people come into Open Gym and be like, oh, well, I just, it's my dream to do a cork, and they've been like drilling scoot fulls over in the corner. I walk over, I'm like, bro, you don't have a cork? They're like, no, I can't do it. I'm like, oh, okay, and I show them this progression. I'm like, just do a scoot full, but like, don't put your foot on the ground. And they're like, what, I just did a cork? And then I just teach them how to swing their leg more, and then they have a good cork. So they go from, I, I've wanted a cork for a long time to five minutes later, they have a cork. 
So if you're like this, hopefully that method will help you. The next method can be helpful if you already have a gainer hook, but you don't need a gainer hook to do this. So if you have a good Arabian or you have a good gainer hook, you can use that to get a gainer Arabian and then use your gainer Arabian to get your cork. So two ways you can think about this. If you come from like a G tramp or gymnastics background or something and you have an Arabian, like a scoot Arabian or a standing Arabian on the floor, you can use the scoot method that I was talking about before, like the full and kind of swing into your Arabian and that'll get you a gainer Arabian. If you don't like that and you would prefer to swing more, which I would recommend honestly, um, then you want to have a gainer hook. So for this one, you're going to need a slant gainer or gainer hook obviously, um, but just in case you don't, what you want to do is a swing hook. I have a whole video on it right there. And then what you want to do is slowly progress that into a slant gainer axis. You can hook kick the whole time and just lean back and spot a target and do a hook and you'll get yourself a gainer hook, especially if you can do it out of a J step or something. So it's kind of a swing hook, swing hook, lean back, but don't hook kick, swing hook, lean back, but hook kick your target. Wow, you got yourself a gainer hook, nice job. And then the way I like to think of gainer Arabian is I'll do my J step or whatever setup, I'll swing up like I'm gonna go for a gainer hook. It's just a gainer hook in my mind. And then as soon as I go to kick out, I don't actually kick, I just get that knee and I grab it and I pull it over. So I'm swinging my leg and then as soon as I go to hook kick, I just grab my knee and pull it to the ground facing this direction and then I will have a gainer Arabian. Either way, you're gonna be kind of on a 45 degree axis so it's not gonna look like your hips are going straight over the top. They're gonna kind of go around the side. It's still a gainer Arabian, don't worry about it. I'll make a gainer Arabian tutorial and go in depth on that. But if you have a gainer Arabian, it's easy from there. All you're gonna do is gainer Arabian, look at the ground and then turn your hips and open. So you can kind of think of it as like a full down or something. So you're gonna swing and you're gonna initiate your gainer Arabian. You're gonna hold that tuck and then as soon as you see the ground that you're gonna land on, you're just going to untuck and turn around back to the direction of momentum you started in. So you were going with the swing this way, you do your gainer Arabian and then you face this way and you did yourself a cork rat layer. It's gonna be awkward at first, but just work your way through it um, and try to untuck more and more over time. At first, you can just hold the tuck the whole time possibly um, and you may still land it, but I recommend doing the gainer Arabian, swinging as hard as you can, pulling over as hard as you can to get a lot of flip so that you can just untuck and gyro down. Obviously on all of these, once you get it, you need to clean it up. So it's gonna look really tucked and gross. You just have to learn to start twisting earlier and earlier with the swing and then the twist, and then it'll look like a better cork. But that's another way you can get it from Gainer Arabian. Gainer Arabian, I feel like I keep slurring that together. <laughs> The next one you can do is kind of the old school way. You can use your B twist to get your cork. So this one's really awkward. The one that I did for this example to show you is the first time I've ever really tried this and I was actually surprised that I landed it because I figured I was just gonna you know, face plan or land on my side or something, but uh, I did it. The problem with all of these is that they are different methods and that they can help you understand how to do it, but it really doesn't look much different when I show you these examples. It's really different in your head though. You're thinking about different things and your body does different things and it feels completely different. But then when I look at the footage, I'm like, ah, it kind of just looks like I'm doing a cork again, just kind of lower or something. But just be aware that I'm thinking B-twist, okay? So what you want to do is you want to do a regular B-twist and make sure that you land with your chest up so that you can uh, land on your left leg first and then right leg second. The only reason I recommend that is because if you don't have that much control in your B-twist right now, then you're just kind of hucking a cork and it's not gonna actually be helpful. Only do this method if you have like a really solid B-twist but you've never really tried cork or you just can't land your cork. But essentially what you wanna do is you wanna work through that motion in your brain. You're setting up and swinging as if you were going to do a cork or a gainer or something and then turn your hip away so that you can spot the ground and then kind of just jump over and like turn towards the ground so that you can like feel like both legs are landing. Um, again, super awkward, but just remember that your right leg is your swinging leg for your uh, cork, but it is also the leg that you lift in the back for your B twist. Obviously that's my twisting side, opposite if you twist to your right. But with that in mind, what you wanna do is you want to swing that leg and then you want to try and turn around that leg until you can land 
facing backwards to your direction of momentum. And then that is just kind of like a vertical cork. After that, it's just getting that leg higher and higher and doing a swing, spot the ground B twist. And then hopefully that can help you get your cork. All that's gonna matter is how high you swing it. So this can actually lead to more of an icy cork if you have an icy B twist. If you have a really straight leg in your B twist and you can hold it out and do kind of like this figure four looking motion, then that can translate really fast to a cork because if you swing at this strong 45 degree angle, but then you just B twist around it with an open body, then that'll be an icy cork. So that kind of is a way that you can trick yourself into doing that. Even if you've had a cork for a long time, but it's not that great kind of like mine. Mine's a little tucked up. I kind of hate it. Uh, I'm a very upper body twister, but with my corks, I need to do both lower body and upper body. I just tend to favor my upper body. Something I'm working on. The next one is very similar, and I thought about doing it with a kick like I did for my cart full. A lot of these obviously are gonna be similar to the cart full uh, tutorial that I did with a bunch of different methods just because it's a very similar movement. However, I'm not using mats as much in this because I feel like it's not as helpful. I'm gonna show you how to use mats uh, later on as like supplementary, but I don't think that mats is like the best way to get your cork. Either way, uh, my swing nine's not very good and I didn't really feel like translating it into a swing nine was like that solid of a method. So instead, I wanted to show you just to do a vertical cork. So even if you're doing one of the other methods, I'd recommend maybe doing this method also just to get the air awareness and feel how it feels because doing a vertical cork is kind of awkward. It doesn't seem like it would be that hard, but um, once you start to invert even a little bit, it's kind of hard to land your cork vertical cork. But essentially what you want to do is you want to start if you're squared up to your target, put your right leg back, put your arms kind of back so my hips are kind of facing sideways to my target and then I'm going to swing my leg at my target and then I just want to 360 back to my target. Get used to that feeling and just make sure that you can land on two legs or your left leg. If you have to land on your right leg all the time, then you're not ready to move on. Make sure you can land on left or both feet. After that, what you're gonna wanna do is the same thing. Set up facing this way to your target, swing your leg at your target, 360, and then actually land all the way facing back here, not facing your target again. So you're landing, trying to land in an eagle position at least a little bit, and then you're ready to start inverting it. So once you're trying to invert it, I'd recommend doing it out of a setup. Pick one of the setups that I talked about earlier, and then you are going to raise your leg a little higher. Um, if you're doing something like a J-step, what you wanna do is you wanna do it, I'll just show you. So you wanna do it with your back to your target now. You're gonna jump forward, do your J-step. You're gonna swing this way, swing, 360, back to here, eagle position. And then it's as easy as getting your leg higher and higher and higher until you can turn it into a cork. With a lot of these methods, um, all I care about is you getting back to your feet. If you're landing on your feet and you're not hurting yourself, go to the next method. You shouldn't be hucking it. Even with this vertical cork method, you should do this like hundreds of times possibly to get it. A lot of beginners think that like a tutorial like this is like move on from step one, step two, two seconds later, step three, a second later, um, or in five minutes, but it could be, um, like a year before you get your cork, just the goal is to give you the knowledge and understand how to go step by step, but you need to do like an if then teaching method. So it's like, if I'm doing my vertical cork and I'm landing it correctly on the left foot, then I can start to swing higher. If I'm doing a really trash vertical cork, then I'm not ready to start inverting because I'm just gonna have a trash landing when I invert. I just want to uh, make sure you understand that. All right, the next one is very unorthodox, very similar to my cart full tutorial. I think that you can use a side flip to get your cork. So if you twist to your left and swing with your right leg for your gainers and cork, then what you want to have is a side flip on your right side if you're gonna do this. Um, the reason being is you're gonna go on your right side and that will turn into your twist if you do your side flip. You'll see what I'm saying. So for this method, make sure that you have a solid side flip that you can land standing up and you have a really good tuck in your side flip. If you're landing your side flip low or you like don't have a really solid tuck in your side flip, then probably don't use this method because this is for people who really know how to do a good side flip and then they can just kind of think side flip in the middle of their gainer. But this one's not too dissimilar than the other methods. This is basically just using a side flip to create your full motion. 
So basically what you're going to do is whatever your preferred method of setting up is. So maybe say you're doing a J step, you're going to do your J step, you're going to swing, you're going to spot over your left shoulder. And then as soon as you see the ground and you are already swinging, you just do a side flip. This is going to initiate your twist and it's going to make you go around the side. You're definitely going to fall the first time unless your side flip is just immaculate. Um, but once you get that feeling, you're almost certainly going to get your feet down first. Then it's just as easy as swinging really hard and committing to it um, and that should get you your cork. This is a very similar method that I used to teach my uh, student Jackson a double full. He did not know how to double full but he had a side full on the ground already so um, I was just like okay bro do a cart spot side full bam landed his double full first try and then he's never lost his double full since and it looks just like a normal double full. So you can use different tricks that you already have to teach yourself the tricks that you're trying to get. And the last method is definitely harder in my opinion than an actual cork, but you can use this to teach yourself a cork if you're really good at gainers and you're really bad at twisting and you're just really scared to cork. And that is with a gainer flash with a late twist or a gainer flash -oo. If you have a solid gainer flash and you can spot the ground for a long time before you actually land your, your kicking leg or your swinging leg, then what you wanna do is just try to half twist it a little bit each time you go for your gainer flash, um, right, right, right before you touch the ground. So um, if you have access to a trampoline, it's really easy to do this on a trampoline or you can use a setup. I wouldn't necessarily do it just with a J-step unless you have a really, really solid J-step to flash gainer um, because you're gonna need a lot of extra power to initiate that twist with. But essentially all you're doing is you're doing a gainer flash, you're looking at the ground and when you see the ground, you just try to pull your left leg behind your right leg so that you can do a gainer semi. Obviously, other side if you twist the other side. And you're just gonna progress through that until you can slowly make it a cork. If you can do a gainer flash where you 360 at the end or a gainer flash gyro, that is way harder than a cork. So all you have to do at that point is when you swing initially for your gainer flash, you just do it early and you got yourself a cork. There are a ton of ways that you can learn a cork. This is by no means a comprehensive list. I just wanted to do an in-depth tutorial on a cork and make you guys understand uh, that you can do it a bunch of different ways and learn it a bunch of different ways before you clean it up. So there are four different supplementary drills and all of them require a mat or something soft. So uh, click off or go to common mistakes if you don't have one of those. So I see a lot of people do a J-step cork going onto a mat, but it is almost never helpful. And the reason is that when you're doing that, uh, you are running towards your mat. And if you swing far enough away from your mat, then you're going to have to travel a long way to get onto your mat. And so it's actually, you're thinking so much more about landing on the mat than actually doing your twist and doing your cork. Or if you get close enough to swing and you have like not a lot of distance to travel onto your mat, then you'll probably clip the mat with your swinging foot. So if you're gonna use a mat that's on the ground, like an eight incher or like a memory foam mattress at home or something, um, what you want to do is you want to J-step and land in the middle of your mat, swing into your cork so that you can do it kind of in place, straight up and down, obviously at a 45 degree axis, but you're only moving up and down or up and over so that you land back where you were taking off. Um, that way you're used to swinging like a full power cork and you're not really altering much. You'll probably have to tuck your knee a little bit more than normal um, than doing like a full swing, but you'll at least have the ability to chuck it without having to worry so much about it as long as you have the real estate of your mat um, that can help you understand how to go full power into your cork. But if you're gonna use a mat, make sure you land on the mat and you take off of the mat and do it like all on the mat uh, rather than jumping up and swinging up onto a mat. The next one is going onto a mat, but a little bit differently. I would recommend that if you are going to go up onto a mat, that you get one that's about chest height to waist height. Maybe chest height is better just because it's gonna teach you how to go up. But the reason being is, if you try to go over a mat or you swing like a full, like you're going backwards over a mat, I thought about including that, but it really doesn't help you understand a cork. It just will help you with a full. Um, so what I would recommend is doing it to where you are running like a J-step into your setup and have the mat in front of you and you're gonna run 
and you're going to do it far enough away to where you can swing but the mat then is like right next to you here and then you're going to actually look over your left side and swing really hard until you can see the mat and then you try to land on your belly um, so you land you swing really hard you look you look you look and then bam you just land on your stomach after that you just basically make it a like dive roll or a roll on your shoulder you can even think of it like a sideways roll just make sure that you invert just a little bit you basically just run swing look over your shoulder make sure you covered enough distance and then land on your back or like a roll this is really just for air awareness and for getting power and understanding how to go high in your cork but it can also help you understand how to spot so if you can do a cork and you can get to that point in the air where you're just looking at the ground it's like bam put your foot there you've done a cork and then that can help you for swings and variations because if you're doing like you know a cork swing you want to be able to spot the ground for a long time and then stand up and swing really strong so that you can do your next cork or if you're doing something like a cork snafu you want to finish that cork super fast spot the ground and then kick and twist depending on the technique you're using for your snap. But this can help you in a plethora of ways. So maybe swing up onto a mat, but I wouldn't recommend swinging onto a flat mat and going sideways, if that makes sense. The next two are very similar, so I'll be brief. You can do it into a foam pit or off of a ledge or off of a mat. Either way, they're basically the same concept. The most dangerous part of this is the object that you're taking off of. So um, you can do this two different ways. Um, you can run and you can J-step so that the ledge is right next to you and you are swinging off and you're kind of looking over to your left as you're swinging off like this or kind of looking back as you're swinging and falling that way. So your swing is going this way, but your body is going this way and then you twist and go off of the thing. I'd recommend only trying this if you already have like a really close to landed cork or like you can land a cork on your knees on the ground then I would recommend doing it off of a ledge or into a pit because otherwise you may not have the air awareness to do this this helps you because it gives you extra height and gives you more time to think in the air but like I was saying the most dangerous part of this motion or this method is the ledge that you're taking off of so if you do it like off of a ledge uh, at the beach or something then the ledge is concrete and you don't go out enough you're gonna smack yourself on that concrete ledge and then it didn't help you at all it just gave you brain damage and then you gotta go to the hospital and spend a bunch of money and it's just it's not worth it so the method that I recommend for doing it off of a ledge is doing it with a pivot step. So with a pivot step, you're just turning and then your heel lines up with the edge of whatever you're going off of. And then you can just swing and lean back, spot the ground behind you, kind of like a full or a normal cork on the ground, and then twist onto the ground. It's a lot more safe as long as you can set out. Um, either way on these methods, make sure you set out. Please, for the love of Bob Reese, set out. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> because otherwise, you're gonna clip on this obstacle that you were taking off of and hurt yourself. Um, just make sure that you can spot whatever you're doing. So if I'm doing it into a foam pit, I will swing, wait until I spot, and then twist. Even for like double cork or something, I will literally go up and I'll spot the pit and then double twist. And that will teach you that your legs are high enough to then twist. Because if you can't spot, then you either didn't twist enough or you twisted too fast um, before you flipped all the way and you're probably under rotating your flip. Okay, on to common mistakes. The first most common mistake I see is doing a really bad setup. So some people think that a J-step means that you run around the entire floor and then you do like a tiny swing. That is not a J-step. If you're doing a J-step, you want to step out to the side, but you want your momentum going forward. Then you are jumping forward with your momentum and then turning 90 degrees and then swinging sideways to your momentum. So if I'm facing you guys, I'm jumping towards you guys, I'm turning 90 degrees in the air, and then I'm swinging this way. And then for a cork, I'm specifically swinging up, but I'm also swinging at a 45 here. And then I go backwards this way. So I go this way, this way, this way. I see people do this all the time with their J-steps where they are stepping forward and then instead of like jumping that way, they jump this way and they have no power and they do like a true gainer and they don't understand why they're not flipping fast enough. Um, the physics of the J-step 
is that you have to go forward, turn 90, and then swing. If you just jump forward and swing forward, then all your momentum is going forward and you won't be able to flip very easily. It's the same thing with other setups though. Some people have like really bad in place scoots and then they can't understand why they can't swing out of it. It's because you're not using your momentum to then swing you. Master scoot, TDR, same thing. Make sure that your setup is good and then use that setup for power. If your setup is not giving you power, then you need to fix that setup or use a different setup because that is the purpose of whatever you're doing. The cork is the highlight. You're just trying to do the setup to gain power for the cork, in this case specifically. The next common mistake I see a lot is trying to stay upright. Um, basically, it looks like you are afraid to drown or something. So you're doing a cork, but you're like, I gotta keep my head up at all costs. Um, and then you don't invert much or you just don't even land your flip because you never flipped. Um, it happens with like B twists, it happens with side flips, it happens with a lot of different tricks. Um, make sure that you are okay to lean back um, while you are doing this because with a cork, you're gonna need to get your hip as high as possible before you twist for power. So make sure that your head is not fighting to stay upright. You have to let yourself flip just spot behind you, let your head go underwater, and then do your twist. The next common mistake I see is not swinging enough. <laughs> I don't have any experience with that one. This is my biggest problem with swings in general and corks. I need to improve my swing um, and I need to do conditioning and I need to do flexibility drills to do that. But every time I get to a session, I'm like, I'll just do it anyway, not a big deal. I'll just swing my leg. And then no matter how hard I try to keep my leg straight, I will bend my knee. Make sure that you are not just bending your knee up for your cork. Try to swing from your ankle and make sure that ankle goes up to where you want to twist and then you twist. Don't make my mistakes. If you are not able to swing like me, what I'm personally doing is leg lifts forward while keeping your left leg straight. So I'm swinging or just lifting straight like this. If you can see what you wanna do is you wanna use your left glute right here to stabilize so that your hip flexor right here isn't doing all the work. So you are swinging with your right leg, but you are flexing your left glute really hard. If you do this with me and you just stand up and lift this leg up here, if you can't lift it higher than me, then you're probably gonna have the same issue as me. Um, when you swing, it is a straight leg motion, bringing your leg up, flexing that left glute, pushing forward with your right hip as hard as you can, holding that until you have set and then twisting. It really depends on my setup. For some reason, I tend to do better swings when I do it out of another setup. So if I do uh, cork gainer switch cork, or if I do like full swing cork, I have a much better swing than if I do like scoot or TDR. So the reason that is for me personally, I'm very aware of this, is that I rush. I wanna use my momentum and I try to like go as fast as possible, but I haven't set enough yet before I twist, so I don't have enough time to do things like double cork or cork variations, unless I go back and say, okay, I'm gonna work back through my corks, I'm gonna get a good high set, and then I try to do variations, and then it's easy peasy. So make sure you are patient with your swings, and you swing all the way up and get height. If you feel like you are swinging and you're getting no power, that's because you aren't. You need to swing harder, get used to your swings, and make sure that your swing is what sets you and then you use your upper body um, for power. Obviously, you can swing your arms at the same time and you should swing your arms at the same time that you're doing your leg swing for the set, but then you don't twist until you have fully set. A lot of trickers will say that you just need a better gainer flush before you do your cork, but my gainer flash is pretty darn good and my swing for my cork is very different. So I swing straight up and I just lean back for gainer flash, but for my cork, I swing about here. Um, even if I try to go here, it tends to make it go over there, but just with a bent knee. So swing your leg here and then twist around that. Speaking of going sideways, the next mistake is going too sideways. So a lot of times people will swing their leg completely sideways because they'll watch a tutorial where they're like, I mean, you said swing sideways, but it's in between your head and your shoulder. 
that is where you want to swing. If you swing any more sideways than that, then you're probably just not setting high, you're setting too low, and you're twisting yourself right down into the ground. If you land it, it's going to be like that B-twist tech. It's going to be very low, and you're not going to be able to do much out of that cork because it's going to be low and fast, but you're going to be hitting the ground before you know it. So make sure that you swing up and sideways, not just sideways for your corks. Another common mistake is inverting too much or trying to invert too much. If you swing straight up and do a full, like with good gymnastics technique, then it's gonna be very hard to do any cork variations. So specifically, if you're trying to do cork variations, um, you really need to set on that 45 degree axis. Um, but in general, a cork is a 45 degree axis move, not a straight over the top. So don't try to swing straight up because then you're getting in your own way basically when you're trying to twist. It's a common issue with you know like gymnasts or people that have really good fulls before they have their uh, corks and they swing so make sure you're swinging up and sideways not just straight up and then trying to go upside down or like whipping and leaning back before you do your twist um, make sure it's kind of an up get sideways look at the ground twist another common mistake I see is not using your arms enough so a lot of times people are completely confused of what to do with their arms I can understand that for things like Webster and stuff because people like all do it differently but almost all the time people swing their arms up to the left and then pull in for their corks so make sure that specifically when you're doing your swing you swing your arms and your leg at the exact same time if you swing one before the other or one before the other then um, two different things might happen so if you swing your arms first and then you swing here that is basically just gonna be a full where you're kind of gainering you're going that way if you swing your leg all the way up and then you wait and then you just pull your arms down instead of bringing them over the top then you're going to twist sideways and you're probably just going to drop straight in place um you want to bring your arms up and over make this body line so that this hip is really high look at the ground and then twist over really aggressively so swing your arms up over down up over down and the last common mistake i see is pretty much common to almost every flip in general, is staying too tucked too long. So um, it's totally fine to tuck on your cork. Almost everyone does, unless you're doing like a double cork. Um, but if you hold that tuck all the way to the floor, one, it's gonna hurt because you're just landing low with all your joints bent and you just don't have anything to absorb with and it's just gonna feel like trash. And two, you're not gonna do a good version. So almost every trick, it's like, there's this point where your chest is really high up and you just have to exit aggressively and pull your head away from the ground and push your legs down to the ground. But a lot of times when you're at that point, you feel like you haven't rotated enough. So you kind of hold it a little bit longer and then you kind of land in a tucked up ball or something. If you're doing that, then you have the capacity to land your cork right now high up you just have to untuck aggressively so it's not just untuck and just like drop to the ground it's like you're up here and you keep your head up while driving your feet down to the ground and then eventually you can get used to that and do it with your left leg pulling your right leg up pulling your head up so make sure you're using your back muscles to pull your head away from the ground while pushing your foot or feet down to the ground like this. That's gonna help you get a higher cork. Okay, hopefully this isn't too long. Hopefully I've covered everything that I can to help you learn your cork. Eventually I will make a tutorial on how to clean up your cork because I feel like getting a trick and cleaning a trick are two different things. It's like catching a fish and then cleaning a fish. Two different things, boy. But I'll do that for almost all of my tricks because again, they're two different things and endless content, you know? But that's not to say that thinking about it differently by using one of these methods in this tutorial cannot help you improve your existing cork. So this tutorial can hopefully help you get and or improve your cork. But I hope that helped you get or improve your cork. Um, I just wanna help you guys, so please leave a comment down below if you have any questions or if there's another video you wanna see from me. Please like the video if it was helpful to you, share it with a friend if they are struggling with their cork, and please subscribe to the channel so that you can help me on my quest to 1,000 subs. We just passed 500, so thank you so much for that. And until next time, please stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you guys later.